It's your boy Javert Like Air coming at you from the detox where we take an intoxicating world and bring it to an intoxifying God. Let's get it in. How do we explain our Christian beliefs without coming off like a jerk? It is important for us to learn how to love Jesus before we can then learn how to love each other. And I tell you, the best thing that you can do for them is to love them, be their friends, and be completely honest about what you believe. So today's detoxified question is how do we treat our gay and lesbian homosexual friends? Like, what do we tell them? How do we explain our Christian beliefs without coming off like a jerk or someone who just doesn't care about others? Because that's not who we are. Well, I hope that's not the message that we're giving off because Christ wasn't like that. Jesus wasn't a jerk. And if Christ wasn't like that, then why should we be jerks? But let's cut to the point. You see, Christians have a very difficult decision to make when it comes on to approaching our brothers and sisters who struggle with homosexual behavior. Now, the reason why we predominantly struggle is it's it's clear. It's because we, one, struggle to love people, uh, and two, we struggle to do what the Word of God tells us to do. Like, what do we do when people don't do what the Word of God teaches us as Christians to do. We get upset, which is so weird because half the time Christians don't even do what the Word of God says. Now, I'm not trying to justify anything off the bat, but let's make something clear. All sin is the same. So what do we do when people don't do the things that God has called us to do? Primarily homosexual behavior. In a way, it's kind of simple. We ought to love each other just as Christ loved us. But how? Show them the same love that Christ showed you. But how? Show them the same respect that Christ showed you. Uh, but how? Let me change the perspective. You see, in order to love each other, we must first learn to love God. So check it out. In Matthew chapter 22 and verses 37, Jesus declared that we ought to love the Lord with all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our heart first. And then in verse 39, it teaches us secondly that we ought to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So it is clear in the scriptures that it is important for us to learn how to love Jesus before we can then learn how to love each other. Show unconditional love and respect to our homosexual brothers and sisters because this is what Christ would have done. You see, Jesus doesn't look down on the sinner, but he looks down on the sin. And last time I checked, we were all sinful. But it's interesting how he came and died for those who were sinful in order to redeem us. You see, Jesus doesn't look down on sinners. He looks down on the sin. And last time I checked, we all had sin, so we're all subject to his grace. Now, just because homosexuality is a sin like everything else doesn't mean that God loves those less. In fact, he loves them all the same. Believe it or not, Christ died for you. Yes, Christ died for you. So no matter what the sin that people are involved in, God still loves us the same. And so we should treat our gay and homosexual friends the same way that we would treat one of our heterosexual friends who are stumbling in sexual affairs outside of marriage. See, I tell you, it is possible to love someone unconditionally, but not approve certain things that they do. So yes, I believe it's possible for Christians to have friends who are not even believers at all. Trust me, just because you believe in God, it doesn't make you a better person. So humble yourself before God and he will exalt you. The Bible teaches us that there are 17 references in the Holy Scriptures that talk about sexual immorality. And only three of those references are actually talking about homosexual behavior. Now, those three scriptures are Romans 1, 18 to 32, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, and 1 Timothy 1, 9 to 11. Now, don't trip, don't trip. Just because there's three doesn't mean that God's not concerned with homosexuality. Chill. It just means that it's not more important than any other sin in the Bible. I mean, we just learned that sin is sin. And when you're sharing your friendship and God's unconditional love with our brothers and sisters that struggle with this sin, remember that it's also important to share it with another brother and sister in Christ so that you can know, one, that you're handling it in a loving, kind, compassionate, and a mature kind of way. And two, making sure that there's nothing else that you need to talk about when mentioning such a 
touchy subject. And again, I get it. It might be tough to talk about this topic amongst your brothers and sisters who struggle with this. But the idea is even if you don't know what to say or how to say it, the most important thing that you need to do is expressing your friendship and love for these people. Now I get it. It might be difficult to talk about. It's a very touchy subject when you're sharing it with your brothers and your sisters and even our friends. But understand that you might be the only person that may be able to influence somebody in your life. And I mentioned this statement years ago. Influence is the most viable conduit that we have as believers. If you lose your influence, then it becomes more difficult to help someone change. And I tell you, the best thing that you can do for them is to love them, be their friend, and be completely honest about what you believe. And note to self that this principle applies to every sin, not just homosexuality and also the friendships that we establish here on earth with non-believers and people who don't want to follow God. Understand that you don't change people. God changes people, but he uses you to accomplish the works on this earth. So be confident in yourself. Be confident in the God that you serve, knowing that he will do what he sets out to do and his word will never return to him void. Guys, I tell you, that we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And although he doesn't need us to move or to touch or to feel or to do anything, understand that he desires to use us to change others on this earth. It is not us that changes people, but it is God through us that changes people. He doesn't need you, but he wants you to impact this world in this end time to harvest souls. Guys, until next time, remember, Jesus loves peace. Now those scriptures are Romans 1, 18 to 32, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, and 1 Timothy 1, 9 to 11. Go learn those scriptures, boy. <laughs> ah, memorizing scripture is pretty tough. Y'all need to try it sometime. Like it's, 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 it's pretty tough.